We are back in Chamonix, and it has been a long, strange dirt journey getting to this spot, which is just below the Bellevue uh, train stop on your way up the normal route. Christoph risked his car rental to get us this high. What was driving him the whole time to go further and harder with this rental than probably should have been done was the idea that every inch he could get in the car was an inch he didn't have to do on his feet. But we're here, we've got some camping gear. We're gonna go sleep up at a uh, bare bones refuge. First time I've ever been to Chamonix and seen blue sky, uh, you know, from horizon to horizon. Landed in Zurich, uh, 7.30 a.m. Picked up the rental car, drove to Chamonix, met up with Danny, uh, proceeded to um, cross every good option off our list of how to climb Blanc. And now we're almost we're like 8,300 feet. Started at Bellevue and Sun's out and the guns are out. And I'm sweating like a pig. Real refuges are closed where you can get a hot meal and a bed and do this like civilized Europeans. We're gonna crash at a little shack shelter up here that supposedly the door is not bolted shut and maybe pretend like we're sleeping for four hours and get up and continue this magical journey up Mont Blanc. Well, the good news is it's dead bolted. Yeah, let's go take a peek inside. <laughs> Dude, it, no, it is locked. Oh, wait, there's no way to go in there. I don't, I, you can't get in. That's what I'm saying. Is, unless you see something I don't, this thing is like. <laughs> okay. Okay, all right. Let me give you some background of what's happening here. Originally, I was gonna come and do this by myself, and I was gonna go from Valley 4 to Summit to Valley 4, but I coaxed Kristoff into coming by promising him luxurious huts with hot food and sleeping arrangements, and then I did zero research to see if that was actually a possibility. So when he said he could go, I had done none of the research because I didn't think he would, and he texted me at three in the morning when I was here and said, hey, by the way, all the huts are closed. I realized that it was the end of September, but we thought we found this rare gem, a hut that was open on the mountain. And I, I guess we didn't dig deep enough. I think we skimmed the surface, read what we wanted to read. And here we are, the night's coming and it's gonna be a cold one. <laughs> We've decided to move on. We just talked to a very helpful Frenchman, but a little worried that the language barrier might uh, be misleading us. He talked about pillows and warmth and beds, and I just don't know if he knows that the building is actually open and unlocked. But with that promise of pillows and beds, we push on to uh, Ted Rouge.
could it be? <laughs> uh, for the day we had. Two things I know for sure. Tomorrow morning, it is going to be very, very cold. And I'm not going to be getting any sleep tonight. The bunks in there are very close quarters. Luckily, I secured my bunk first. Uh, Christoph will be spooning with a stranger. So I'll be spooning Christoph. I just feel so much more comfortable spooning someone I know. I am not looking forward to sleeping here in this hut, but I, I also would rather sleep in this hut with a bunch of strangers than out here in the cold wind on the rocks with my pad and 40 degree sleeping bag. Last night, we slept in the hut and that hut had tighter sleeping quarters than a submarine. Probably smelled a little worse too. And I just went out into the sitting area where people eat to get some fresh air. Thought I might never wake up again, but I'm sure that hour of sleep that I got will serve me well. We've got 5,000 feet to the summit and I don't know, three miles. We couldn't sleep any longer than about midnight. So decided to just kind of put our stuff on and uh, see if we can get up to the summit for a romantic sunrise. But I'm excited. I'm, I'm happy to be here because, well, one, if I pull this off after my jet setting the last three weeks, Danny has promised he will not bother me or shame me for riding my bike and for the rest of the season. We're very gingerly making our way up this loose, steep, rocky section and we're doing it because we have people below us. comedy of errors today. <laughs> so we got up here to the uh, Gooder hut and realized we are going way too fast. And we're going to be standing on the summit of Mont Blanc at 3.30 in the morning, <laughs> looking at each other like, this is stupid. So we came down to one of the little uh, refuges that's still open and we're just chilling with some friends. I'm gonna hang out here maybe for another half hour. We want to time that morning Alpen glow just right, just as we crest the summit of Mont Blanc. But uh, having a good time. We're eating lots of chocolate bars. <coughs> Checking out everybody's smelly boots in here. Got every layer on. We're about to head back out into the cold, dreary world. I've <laughs> got every layer on. 
And I'm missing the one layer I forgot and possibly left in the car. That's for my legs. So I've got some chilled quads. Set in that hut back there. With a bunch of other people looking like a <clears throat> group of refugees waiting for the sun to come up. And it's up. So we're going up. And it hasn't warmed up, but it has lightened up. Anyway. What a cool view. What a cool view. Right, top of Mont Blanc, 15,700 something, and nearly killed Christoph, but he got up here. Best part is, I think this proves that mountain biking is not enough. <laughs> so I'm not gonna say that mountain biking will prepare you for Mont Blanc, not in a million years, but gotta give me some credit for actually being up here. <laughs> the last, the last like, mountain I climbed was probably a month ago. <laughs> the last time I exercised at anything but sea level was like three weeks ago. So I feel pretty good about myself. And this is awesome up here. Now we gotta figure out what we're doing on the way down. I think we're just gonna turn around and, and <laughs> destroy our knees with a 10,000 foot descent back to our back to our car. But kudos to Kristoff for making it. I actually never doubted him, to be honest. Even though the speed at which he made it on the last 2,000 feet wouldn't impress anyone. <laughs> but he's here. And he told me that this proves mountain biking does do something. And I never said mountain biking doesn't do something for you fitness-wise. I just think of running and climbing mountains is the best thing for climbing mountains.
That is Mont Blanc. Dad, I'm saying that right. That is Blanc. We just got Blanced. And it was everything we thought it would be. Just took three tries to make it happen. Actually, it wasn't everything I thought it would be. In some ways it was easier, and in some ways it was much more difficult. I think Christoph will agree. We both underestimated and overestimated it. I'll have to say that was the most bass backwards way to do Mont Blanc, as far as the planning goes. Because basically every option, everything Danny said he planned didn't quite work out. And even when we thought we had our plan C in place, it didn't work out, but things did work out in the end. And we stood on top of an awesome mountain and it was great. And I, I rode the pain train for the last 1500 feet and I was happy to do it. But uh, it's kind of crazy. It's between my flight landing yesterday and my flight taking off tomorrow, but will be 48 hours. And in the meantime, we knocked out one of our uh, little objectives. So happy about that. Also happy to go home and see my wife and kids who haven't seen my face in like three weeks. 